perch. Good morning, Facebook. Oh, my phone don't want to stay. I'm trying. <laughs> Greg is working nights this weekend, so I'm trying to come outside and be not distracting, not annoying, not keeping him up or anything. And I'm trying to get everything propped up on this tiny little patio table on my porch. So far, it ain't happening. And why I hit the live buttons, I thought I had it, and then it all started sliding as soon as I got live. So, I guess my head can be just cut off a little bit, and maybe that'll, no, my phone's just not going to stay. I need a different kind of prop. Oh, maybe right there. <gasps> maybe if I don't move. <laughs> okay, so trying something different. I hope y'all can hear. I didn't know which uh, microphone was better for what, so I've got my AirPods connected. I will have to turn the camera around in a minute and show y'all these hummingbirds. They are swarming like crazy. I think they're getting ready to fly south. They've been swarming all summer, but it's it's just, I could sit and watch them all day. But anyways, September 24th, happy Saturday. Um, of course, the air unit just kicked on whenever I hit go live button, the go live button. So I hope y'all can hear me. Um, uh, if there's any y'all there, and um, I figure there might be later, if not now, so, um, but if somebody, let me look down here, no, nobody's looked in on this, I mean, Facebook yet, probably, or, um, Instagram, so, nobody can tell me right now, there's all kinds of distractions, Lenny's out there playing with the dogs and got them all barking, the hummingbirds are swarming. The air is running. It's so nice and pretty outside and not very um, hot yet today. Good morning. November's finest. Can you hear me okay? I'm sitting outside, so there's lots of background noise. So just curious um, before I go all in and then can't even be heard if you can hear me. So, let me know. I don't think anybody is watching on Facebook yet. So, they can't let me know. You can hear me. Okay, great. Great deal. There is one viewer on it on Facebook. Can you hear me? Um, you should be able to because I think I've got the AirPods connected to the Facebook one, to my laptop. So, here we go. So, September 24th, happy Saturday in the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, of course. And um, today we're talking about an emergency number. And the scripture text is coming from Jeremiah 33, 3. You just have to be seen, don't you? Nobody wants to see your basketball. I'm sorry. I asked you not to distract, and that's exactly why. In or out, but not in my face. Thank you. <laughs> There goes my phone slipping again. Maybe it'll stay right there. It's caught on my keyboard guard thing. So, okay. No, I'm not mean to my kid. We just already discussed this before I got on here. And as soon as he saw me on here, he comes over here wanting to show off his basketball. Anyway. Um, so, Jeremiah 33 and 3 is where we are. I haven't turned to it yet in my Bible. We'll see what we, how long we take to get through the Devo part and go from there. Um, oh darn, I accidentally clicked, let me look, no, nobody's watching on Facebook again, that's fine, fine then, good morning, Jordania, I think, Jordania, there's lots of pretty ways you could say that, that's gorgeous, okay, so, call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Um, Jeremiah 33, 3. He will. He sure will. I can say that from experience. We have all memorized the emergency call, excuse me, call number 911. But we also need to memorize the eternal call number 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you. Jeremiah 33, 3. This is a marvelous invitation from our Lord. But he didn't stop there. His invitation was followed by a list of great I will promises. Oh yeah, we're going to have to dig into that chapter. Um, I will bring health. I will heal. 
I will bring abundance of peace and truth. I will rebuild. I will cleanse. I will pardon. Oh, I will get my hair out of my face. Verses, it says 6 through 8 in the same chapter, Jeremiah 33. We'll flip to that here in just a minute. Repentance of sin is all it takes to realize God's great love. Repentance of sin is all it takes to realize God's great love. Think of that. There is an order. There is an order. And it takes a step of faith to repent, to turn from that and say, you know what? I don't want that mess. I want you, Lord. You and only you. And when you do, like it says, you'll realize his great love. King David said, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. Psalm 51, 17. I'm in my That's enough. I'm in my it is often into broken ground that the seeds of spring are planted. They germinate to grow into a bountiful harvest. And it is into broken hearts that God in love plants his word to save and prepare his people for some great work. Call to him. He is reaching out in everlasting love. Has the Lord healed your broken heart? Oh, how many times? How many times? Um, I've had a lot of heartbreaks, a couple of really severe ones. And he is a healing God. He is a healing God. Um, that's great, but I want to go to Jeremiah 33 and read more about those I wills. Isn't that exciting when he just straight up says I will? Because you know that nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop him. And there's contingencies that we have to um, participate in. Um, to get to those I wills, but you know, the glory in those I wills, the joy unspeakable um, that, it, that can be now, just in knowing and walking with him, but in knowing what is to come. So, <clears throat> that was verse 3, and then it went on in 6 through 8, it said, you know, it's not a real long chapter. It talks about the covenant, his God's covenant with God. I mean, God's covenant with David. These dogs are distracting me. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, while he was still confined in the guard's courtyard, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time. The Lord who made the earth, the Lord who forms it to establish it. The Lord is his name, says this. Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and incomprehensible things that you do not know. Notice that it's call to me first. Um, I can attest to that in, in my walk, in my experience of coming to the end of my rope, thinking the whole time I was a Christian that, that I was just, uh, you know, free to do as I pleased. And you are. You are. But um, we're a little too loose with the term Christian. I was not following Christ, um, or I would have been on the right path, not on the path to destruction. But God kept me, and the moment, the moment <laughs> that I realized my desperation, that I realized how, you know, how much I had messed up, how I couldn't do it without him. The moment I called out to him, in other words, he did answer. He immediately, immediately, yes, there are things that have been works in progress and will continue unto the day of the Lord Jesus Christ because his word says so, but he, he changed what had to be changed right then in order for me to hop onto the right path. And move forward in him. He opened my eyes. He removed scales off my eyes that this world and the enemy had put on there. Um, you know, the lies. The lies the enemy tells you that it's okay to do this and okay to do that. He draws you in temptation by temptation until you're living a whole life of full-blown sin. And, um, you know, shame keeps you from church. Shame keeps you from um, the Christian's 
true Christians that you know, the ones that, and they don't, will even say that they treat us bad when we're in, in that lost state, when we're over there on that wrong path, that wide, destructive path. But it's not, I know there is Christians, hear me, with the quotes, who will look down on you and will judge. I get accused of it now, but it's not judgment um, to want somebody to come out of it. The judgment would be if I wanted you condemned in it, if I wanted to see you meet your consequences full force, if I wanted to see you punished for it, that would be judgment. I don't want that for you. I want you to realize that God has a better way. I want you to come to him and let him make you over and set you on the right path. That's what I want for you. That's what he did for me. And, um, you know, I know that it's, it's available for everybody. But so... Um, what I was getting at was you will self-condemn and not even realize it. You try to say, oh, they, they act better, like they think they're better than me, you know. Um, well, oftentimes it's because they're living a better life than you. They are. They're on that right path and you're not. And you're the one. You're the one that recognizes that the most and makes that separation between the two. And what it is... <laughs> is that um, resisting the devil makes him flee. And when you're living his way, you're fleeing from that which is righteous. You're fleeing from God. You're fleeing from God's people. You're fleeing from the light and in further into the darkness. So, side note, long side note there. But when you call to him, he will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things that you did not know. I didn't understand all this until he gave me the understanding. All I did know, and thank God I did, that's from seeds planted when I was a little child, was that he was king, that he was sovereign, that he was in control, and that um, I could call on him, that, you know, he was available to me. I had called on him for years and years and years, and he kept me. He kept me. He answered those prayers, but I wasn't turned from those wicked ways in order to follow him. I was trying to live both worlds, and he, he allowed me to get to a point where I recognized um, that that was impossible, and, uh, you know, got on board with him. Hallelujah! <laughs> when you get on board with him, oh, come on, get on board with the Lord. So, incompre incomprehensible things you do not know, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the houses of this city and the palaces of Judah's kings, the ones torn down for defense against the assault ramps and the sword. The people coming to fight the Chaldeans will fill the houses with the corpses of their own men that I will strike down in my wrath and rage. If y'all hear that humming, that's how many humming. I'm Three. There's probably ten at least swarming um, the feeders that are opposite me on the porch. Anyways, uh, that's what I keep looking up at. So, I have hidden my face from this city because of all their evil. Yes, he will hide his face. You know, and that's where I was with the crying out. I wanted him. I wanted him to make things good and easy for me, but I didn't want to get it. I didn't want to turn from my wicked ways. I didn't want to, and it came down to, Lord, please save my child. My child is headed to, headed down the wide path of destruction. At 14 years old, he was. And um, <clears throat> that was in April that summer. Lord um, arranged that he ended up at a boot camp. A boot camp where he, hey, Sean, stranger, where he, um, spent time in the Word every day, where he got close. I've got letters from that summer that are beautiful, where, you know, he says, Mom, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be close to God now. It's everything you said it would be. So anyways, God orchestrated that and brought him to that place and brought me to this place, um, you know, not knowing but now seeing that it was incomprehensible, but lo and behold, here we are. Um, 
to bury him two years ago, to bury his body two years ago, but to praise God for rescuing him, for rescuing him from the destruction that he was on. Anyway, so where did we get to? I have hidden my face from this city because of all their evil. He had hidden his face from me. I had to cry out to him in desperation. He knew that I was empty. Excuse me. <clears throat> he knew that I was empty of me. He knew that I was at that point. I was at that rock bottom ready to surrender all. And I did. And he did. He answered. And he showed me and continues to show me great and incomprehensible things. So I will let them experience the, oh wait, I got ahead, yet I will certainly bring health and healing to it and will indeed heal them. I will let them experience the abundance. Okay, got to check on my kid. To be continued. <laughs>